Okay, welcome back, uh, Classical Study students. Um, there was a slight glitch with the filming uh, yesterday, so that explains the change of uh, clothes into the casual Saturday look, as they say. Okay, you will need your friends, Arian and Plutarch, for this. You'll need your Classical Studies manual. Okay. Uh, and we'll look at the Battle of Gelgameda. So if there's any repetition on, on the filming and the, the, the material that you're getting, that's the explanation for it. We were looking uh, yesterday at Egypt and Alexander's next test consists of the Battle of Gelgameda, 2005, 2010, 2015, 2020. Hopefully, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? And we can look at the past questions and we have compare the preparations made by Alexander with the preparations made by Darius before the Battle of Gelgameda. A 15 marker, an 8 and a 7, okay? Three quarters of a page. You know what to do with that. How did Alexander's tactics lead to success in the battle? Hmm. Uh, a 9, 8 and 8, three paragraphs, page and a half, beginning, middle, end. I'll come back, maybe at the end, and talk about these. And the immediate consequences of the Battle of 10, a 5 and a 5. Okay, then we have this uh, strange looking question from 2010. Strange looking question because it was a 50, and so it's a bit of a riddle, you know. That's a classic story, isn't it? Okay, given the count of the Battle of the Gelgamela, and uh, under the following headings preparations for Alexander, by Alexander and Darius for the battle. Again, you know, you're looking at uh, probably this is going to be marked. 13, 13, 12, 12, 26, and 24 is 50, okay? So four paragraphs on the 59 question. You know how to do that. Three, three pages. One paragraph, two paragraphs, one paragraph. So it's kind of similar to the 2015 question. The beginning, preparations by Alexander and Darius. So you're looking at maybe 13 marks, you're looking at 15 in the woods. What two things Alexander did? What two things... Uh, Devised it. In the other question, you want to compare them, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The course of the battle, again, this is the bulk of your answer, and this is the bit that students don't do very well. Uh, all those learned responses, all those hammer and anvil tactic and all that sort of thing, right? You do it for Arian, you use Arian's quotes, you don't use some quote that you've seen off the internet. Okay, and the consequences of Alexander's victory for his campaign to conquer the Persian Empire, again, that's your last part. And uh, when we went to 2005, uh, at the Battle of Gelgamela in 331 BC, Alexander's forces defeated the Persians under Darius. Describe the preparation of both sides of the battle, and that was a 5 and a 5 at the time. And given counts of the battle again, we've got our beginning, middle, and end 9, 8, and 8. Okay? And commenting on tactics employed by. Darius and by Alexander. And so the tactical question there. So it's a variation on the theme, really. Uh, and 15. None of the aftermath of the battle there. Because, I mean, the, 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 the lads and the sources, Plutarch and Arian, they don't say much about the, uh, about the consequences. Uh, so, that's it. So maybe it'll come this year. It'd be a nice question. There's usually a battle question on every year. Last year we all expected Isis, Pope Ken Isis, and uh, students handled with varying degrees of success. Uh, and of course, like I said, to be very, very wary of the internet learned of answer. Okay, Your answers must show evidence of understanding. Understanding of the concepts behind these sort of things. And it becomes quite obvious. It's hard to explain to people. But it becomes quite obvious when you're reading an answer whether it's been just learned of or there's a degree of understanding around it. Okay, good. Uh, I'll then um, move on to the back one. Okay. And a bit of a map. We know Alexander's been to Memphis. Okay. Um, I'm sure he went to see the pyramids. And then he found the city of Alexandria that would be considered the end of Alexander's coastal policy, if you're, if you're going to practice this question. I mean, there's lots of questions you can practice in your enforced absence from, from school. Uh, lots of things you can, you can practice 
And of course, like I said, if I didn't say it as GP4, I'll say it to you now. If you want to do questions, continue to do questions, like we said, one or two questions a week, that's what we, we, we agreed on. Uh, do them times, scan them in, and email them to me. Uh, rather than type them, because you won't be typing the exam, you'll be handwriting the exam, okay? There's the uh, address I have, okay? Uh, so, um, I was talking about Alexandria, the coastal policy, and then of course, here to Siwa, and that sort of big encounter of the article and uh, he comes away from Siwa. Some people think a different man. We'll talk about that when we come back. I look forward to it. Okay, so here we are. He goes back up the coast, back to his great victory in Tyre. Okay, and then in, in, now he's going into new territory, right? He's leaving the coast. He's leaving the sea, okay? And uh, he's going inside. The, the, uh, we're, we are unsure of his movements. And of course, there's, a, there's desert around here. But there's some uh, mention in some of the secondary sources about how he possibly made some contact with Jewish groups here who helped him. Uh, they really would have been no friends of the Persian Empire, that's for sure. So up he goes here, and uh, he's going to go across here, and he's moving towards here, down the Mela. Down the Mela. And this is where the big battle is going to be fought between himself and Darius. It's like the sequel, isn't it? The rematch after Issus. And uh, Isis was a disaster for Darius. Darius he, he, he made some really basic mistakes. The first being leaving the prepared ground, listening to the advice of what Arian calls sycophants, who are the bane of kings. And here he is now in Gargamela. He's not going to listen to any advice this time about leaving the prepared ground. And the ground has all been prepared. He's flattened it out, a huge plain. Flattened out, picked up all the bushes, the stones, everything off the plain. It's going to be like a nice flat pitch so he can take up Alexander with his superior numbers and particularly Alexander's great worry that he might be outflanked in battle. And of course, that's a terrible thing to happen in any battlefield situation. So uh, that's Galgamela. Things are moving towards Galgamela. Darius is getting a huge host. Uh, and uh, uh, together, and uh, Alexander is moving to meet him. Okay, and uh, that's what we're talking about there. So, if we were um, looking at our books here, we'd really begin reading about this on uh, page 159, 159, and remember, there's uh, preparations for the battle. So when we're looking at preparations for the battle, we're always looking for signs and omens, we're always looking for a bit of advice from Parmenio, and we're always maybe looking for that part of the question, we concluded in, in part A or part B, uh, as those questions came out, the formations and the preparations made. We're also looking for Darius's preparations. So when we start on page 159, while the troops were resting, there was an almost total eclipse of the moon. And Alexander offered sacrifice to moon, sun, and earth, the three deities supposed to be concerned in this phenomenon. The opinion of Aristander the seer was that the moon's failure was, a, was an advantage for Alexander and the Macedonians, and the coming battle would be fought before the month was out. He concluded, moreover, that the sacrifices portended victory. So, we've got the good omens. We've got the bit of advice from Alexander's generals. We've got Alexander's speeches. We've got the preparation of the ground. All that should be included in the first part of your answer. Okay, if you're answering this particular question. Alexander made his way towards the Zadbi, north of Nineveh, where he crossed the river Tigris on the night of the 20th of September, 331 BC, in autumn battle, and there was a lunar eclipse, which most interprets being a good omen as a show of victory over Darius, who guaranteed that Alexander become lord of Asia. He was waiting, oh, before the month's end, that's what he meant, before the month's end, 
drives the weight for Alexander in the plain of Galgamela. With a larger army than that of Issus, gathered from all sections of the empire, he prepared the ground for cavalry by clearing all the plants and obstacles. When Parmenio suggested a night attack, Alexander responded, I do not see a victory. So we have a pattern here. Parmenio's advice rejected once more. He must be reluctant to give any more advice. Uh, actually, before this, Parmenio recommends that they scout around and rest. And Alexander listens to him at that time and accepts his advice. So it's not all. Uh, Parmenio says something and Alexander rejects it. And, okay. Uh, what you would also want to include here is Alexander gives orders uh, four days rest for his troops and um, plenty to eat. Okay, so he's they're very confident going in and they're resting. In contrast, Darius keeps his men in formation all night, waiting for the battle, creating nervous tension. Uh, and uh, of course, they must, be, they must be very apprehensive, I suppose, about the battle. And, uh, What's happening. So there's a contrast in approach to the battle, to the beginning of the battle. Let me skip on here and we'll look quickly at Alexander's formation in the battle. And the diagram in your book is a little bit different than the diagram that I've got up here. In your notes, then you'll see the makeup of the different uh, armies. And uh, if we look here at uh, this diagram here. The one, two, three, I'm going to write notes on the board about. Okay, so let me just first of all look at the formation. It's an unusual formation, isn't it? Normally Alexander lines up with the infantry in the centre, the companion cavalry on the right, Thessalian and Allied Greek cavalry on the left, Parmenio out here, Alexander out here, the phalanx 16 deep of, of Macedonian and Greek mercenary, spearman and allied troops, which are also Greeks. Here he's, he, he has this army there at a, an angle, like this. Okay. An angle like this. And they're going to move like this. The army's going to move like this, across the battlefield. Not in a diagonal. Ar Arian calls it an oblique angle. He likes that phrase. So here we go. There's the companion cavalry. Here we have Thessalian and uh, Greek allied cavalry. That's the phalanx, that's the cavalry. Parmenio's here. Okay. And uh, here we have the companions with Alexander riding with the companions as always. Okay. And uh, we have further cavalry out here, mercenaries, and then we have the Greek mercenary back up. And we, we have these troops behind here. So Alexander's created a sort of a kind of like a a box formation there, because he's in, he's he's concerned about being outflanked. Look at the size of drives this cavalry, you know, and he's ready on this open plain. So there's no obstacle. It's not like Isis where they're all crammed into the into into the the difference between the mountains and the sea. There's none of those issues there. Okay. So this is a this is the this kind of form uh, before the battle. Uh, Darius, if we look quickly, has a long line. Back here we have what they call the Persian levy. Okay, all those troops back there. And uh, here we have this long, 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 long line of uh, various forms of uh, troops wearing their national dress from this enormous empire. And in the, in the van of the, uh, the army we have this, the, uh, the Scythian chariots, 200 of these, and uh, these are chariots, this is Darius's big plan, they're going to charge straight through here, okay, they're going to charge straight through here, the, the chariots have spikes sticking out of the wheels, they're going to rip apart the phalanx, this is going to be the, this is going to be the attack, this is the plan of Darius, okay, as well as trying to outflank Alexander, and Let's have a look at what happens. Okay, so if we look at uh, what happens at number one here, we're starting the battle itself now, okay? And we're going to have seven points in battle. So number one, which corresponds with number one on the board. Alexander advances. at an 
behind it. It's always nice to get a uh, call from Arian early on, isn't it? And he's beginning to move here. What's the purpose of this? This is to move the battle off the prepared area. Move the battle, move the whole thing. He's, he's pushing the whole uh, army. Now, this is very important in military uh, terms, you know, and uh, you can equate it to modern sport uh, about all these analysts come on and they say, oh, well, they've got control of the midfield. If you control the midfield, you force your tempo and way of playing, playing onto uh, the Europe team in a, in a football match or something like that. Okay? Uh, he's moving it here. The ground over here is rougher. It'll hamper to rise his plans. So he advances an oblique angle. Attempting to move the battlefield off the prepared. And number two, Bessus tries to counter this move. Lovely. Look, here's Bessus. He's going to be important later on. Bessus comes around, swings around with his, uh, his cavalry. Okay. Uh, this is hard for uh, uh, when he nearly breaks through, but he doesn't. And the uh, reinforcements come up here. Uh, and uh, he's attempting to, to block this move, okay? Uh, and there's always this danger of this outflanking movement. But uh, that's it. That's the move to stop this move. So this is, this is how the battle works. And of course, then we have number three the attack of the side of chari chariots. Disappointment to this man here, Darius, the Sardinian chariots, because they proved to be very, very ineffective. You may remember when Alexander was fighting the, I think it was the Free Tribillians, or the, that's not right, the Free Thracians, uh, or the Tribillians, they fired down wagons uh, off the hillside, and Alexander's troops separated and then closed ranks again. This is one of the things they did to stop the chariots and make the chariots ineffectual in the battle. The only thing that they did was these groups here, these light armed troops, fired arrows or fired arrows at the drivers or all sorts of things, sling shots, things like that. Anyway, what happened was this turned out to be totally ineffective. Right? Those that got through, they separated, they closed ranks again and they were easily mopped up behind the situation there. Darius has got a problem now because uh, what does he do next? Okay, he's also got a problem here because once these guys attack here, and I'm going to show you another slide now. Then, Alexander's watching with his companion cavalry like he always watches with his companion cavalry, like a hawk for a gap. size of the moment of the battle.
Spread through the gap. Switch straight away for Darius. Who runs away again the second time. This is like some sort of action replay, isn't it? Straight through the companions. Swing. They're on the right, so they swing left. Darius sees them coming and phew, he's gone. Again. What a contrast to leadership styles, eh? Yeah. Okay. And of course, I think uh, this is part of Alexander's tactics, because that's in the question, isn't it? Tactics that uh, if Darius ran, well, the rest of them are going to do as well, aren't they? Okay. Uh, we'll quickly look at. Uh, there's, 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 uh, there's nearly uh, two stories in battle. That's the first story, one to four. Okay. This proves to be the decisive moment within the battle. But there's stuff going on on the Persian right, the Macedonian left, okay? And we must mention this in the battle, so this would make up the third paragraph or the third point in your answer. Uh, okay, so if you were talking about outline what happens in the course of the battle, you'd be going from a beginning, middle, end, that would be the type of thing that you'd be doing, okay? So number uh, five there on the map, number five is Mazaeus. Is that spelled correctly? Uh, Mazaeus. Mazaeus attacks the Par 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 Parmenio here, right? And he almost outflanks him, and he almost defeats him. And so much so, Parmenio is under such pressure, he sends a message to Alexander to come and help him, okay, to come and help him, so that's happening as well, okay, and uh, Alexander then breaks off the pursuit of Darius and goes and turns to go to the right wing here, Macedonian left, Persian right, in order to help Parmenio, he's struggling under here, right. Simultaneous almost to this happen was the the break in the Macedonian. Okay, for the second battle in a row, because it happened at Issus, remember? When they were crossing the river. The gap forms and boom, this was a dangerous moment. These are uh, Indian troops, cavalry. And they charged. Of course, they could have gone this way, they could have gone this way, they went straight uh, for some mysterious reason. And uh, they kept on going straight towards the baggage trains and things like that at the back of the, uh, at the, back of the army, where they were easily defeated. And uh, that was it. So, but uh, I suppose this is concerning for Alexander's generals and Alexander himself. Uh, meanwhile, Parmenio has ra rallied by the time we get to point seven. Uh, He's rallied and counterattacked, in fact, and he's held the line and they fought superbly. He have pushed back the, the pressure here. As a result, Alexander's coming over to help Parmenio, who no longer needs the help, okay? And he comes across a lot of retreating Persians. So we have this battle within a battle, if you like, point seven, uh, where the retreating Persians fight the Macedonians, and they fight hard because they're, they're, they're fighting to try and escape and get away. And, uh, here we have uh, a, a battle where, a little mini battle, where up to 60 companions are killed. Okay? And uh, possibly one of the reasons for the relationship between Alexander and Parmenio begins to sour. So, It's all over at that stage, really. All over at that stage. And of course, we have Arian's closing lines, which give the whole thing a... Uh, who 
little bit of symmetry. Alexander's losses in the battle amounts to about 100 men killed. Over 100,000 horses nearly half of them belonging to belonging to companions perished from either wounds or from exhaustion in pursuit. The Persian losses were reckoned about 300,000 dead. The figure greatly exceeded by the number of prisoners. The elephants, or such war chariots as escaped destruction, were also captured. Such was the end of the Battle of Gaudamela, fought in the month of October during the archonship at Athens of Aristophanes. Aristander had foretold before the month which saw the moon's eclipse was over, the wet battle would be fought and Alexander would win it. He was a true prophet. <laughs>